All right, let's start building some tile sets with those tiles we just loaded in and then some screens. And we're also going to be creating actual palettes for the game. And you're going to see how some of the, how that works a little bit better. Um, so if I let's we, we, we really looked at pick the pixel editor pretty deeply and hopefully you can figure out a lot of ways to use it now uh, to create your graphics, whether you create them internally or externally. Uh, let's let's move on to the graphics banks here. Um, we've got graphics banks, which are which handles using the tiles like the tile sets we just built, and we got the monster graphics banks, which handles using uh, the monster graphics uh, like in the, the like the bug monster that we loaded in. Um, I'm going to load in the graphics banks, open that up, and I'm going to go to graphics banks, graphics bank one. Um, all the as, all the uh, tile sets that we created were in graphic graphics bank one. Um, there's six main tile sets per graphics bank. So we did the first two. They're both going to be in here. Uh, if I click on assets, um, I, I would see. Uh, tile set zero, which was the, the grassland tile set, except I don't. Why don't I see any? Because everything is gray. Now we don't want to use the dummy palettes anymore. We're going to make a real tile set for the grassland. So before I get into this window too far, I'm going to go to palettes and I'm going to go to where it says palette groups, just like I did before. I'm going to right click, add a palette group. Instead of user palette group though, I'm going to right click on it, rename it. This is going to be I'll call it overworld palettes. Now you could call it anything you want. Uh, I'm going to have it use palette zero. Uh, I'm going to rename this um, grass, grassy palette. And I'm going to right click on that and assign it to overworld palettes. Okay, so now if I open up overworld palettes with this little plus sign, there it is right here. It's still blank. Um, I'm going to go back to assets, graphics bank one, assets. And I'm going to pull in, uh, it automatically did, overworld palettes, grassy palette, and I spelled palette wrong. Don't hold that against me. I apologize. Um, and if I remember right, I can kind of remember what my palette looked like for the grass line. First of all, the first color was black. And then I put my ground color down here, which was green. And I hadn't decided really which green. I'm going to go with this one, I guess, this darker color green. And you can see now my tiles are starting to show up over here uh, because they're outlined appropriately. It's not everything the same color. Um, and for the tree, I think I had a lighter color green. And then I had a uh, brown for the tree trunk. And, you know, maybe a lighter brown would look better. Like it, it, that looks, that could be gold depending on what it's around, or that could be brown uh, depending on what it's around. I noticed it pops a little bit better against dark colors. Um, this is more of an orange, uh, or it could be really dark brown, but that almost looks black. So, I, you know what? I'm going to use this gold-ish color uh, and, and, and make it sort of a light tree trunk. Also, I had a tile set for the mushroom, which was the ground color. Uh, and it was the highlight color was, you know, one of these sort of fleshy tones and the, the, uh, sort of the magic mushroom color could have been one of these purpley tones. I'll, I'll use this one for now. So I want to build a tree with that and I want to build a mushroom with that. Um, and I, I still have one left over and for right now, I'm just not going to use that quite yet. Um, okay. So now I've got tiles loaded. I've got pallets loaded. Here's just before we actually get into making these tiles, if I was in the pixel editor now and I saw overworld palettes, grassy palettes, and I started to manipulate them, if I start changing these colors, it's going to change my grassy palette colors. I don't want to do that. So that's why I made this dummy palette so that I can manipulate these colors all I want and gauge them against the graphics I'm loading. Um, and it's not really affecting the game. Uh, so... This should update. This will update if I change one color. Okay. So if I just pretend to change one color. Now, it actually shows me the, the palette right here. Um, let's go back to assets in Graphics Bank 1. And let's actually start making some assets. And before we do, right now, uh, these tile sets, uh, that's my second tile set. Notice it's showing it through whatever palette I have loaded. Um, I made tile set zero and I made tile set one. And I didn't make anything else. So that's just going to be all black. Um, sometimes these, this is hard to remember, like what, which ones of these, like if I was just looking real quick and maybe I want to give these a name so they're easy to remember. If we go to project, project labels, I can now name my tile sets. I can go to tile sets and my, I can go to bank one and here's my main tile sets. I can click on this and instead of saying tile set zero, this, I can call this 
grassland and set it. And I could call this one dungeon or whatever I wanted to call it and set it. Now, uh, the pro if I, now if I navigate away and come back, it's called grassland and dungeon. Um, so I can sort of define what these are called. It doesn't do anything for the game. It's just for my own organizational purposes. And I'm not sure right now if saving saves those labels or not, or if you're going to have to name them sort of as you go, uh, every time you open it, if it doesn't, don't worry, that's, that's going to be fixed. I just can't remember, uh, if that's saved or not. And similarly, you could name a lot of things like the types of tiles, the uh, the um, animation types, the the what happens when you when he hits when a monsters hit a solid object or you know all kinds of things. Um, we're gonna look at those as we start building objects. For right now, we're just concentrating on making some some tiles. Now tiles have both a graphic component. Uh, and a, a attribute component, which decides which of these attributes it uses, which of these sub palettes this tile can use and a collision component all into one tile. So when you're drawing them to the screen and you're placing these assets, it's placing all that data in that spot. And you don't have to think about that, which is really cool. Um, right now my tiles are unnamed, but I happen to know what the names of these tiles are. So I'm going to, I'm going to go through and I'm going to name these and I'm going to show you where you can find this information. Um, if I, you don't have to do this, just, you can stay on this window. I just want to show you what's happening. And uh, you might want your tiles to do very different things. We've set these tiles up to do very specific things to go along with this tutorial set. If I go to my routines folder into user scripts, and we're going to look more into this when we're scripting our objects, I have tile types. Tile type zero is null. It doesn't do anything. It's great for walkable tiles. Tile type one is this is a solid tile tile type two is a let's see this is a death tile if i run into this it will kill me tile type three is a win tile if i run into this i'll win the game tile type four um this is a warp to a different screen tile and tile type five i think that's it so it's just those five zero one two three and four um those are the only ones that have any information yet and so when, earlier when we were talking about this is not all that nest maker can do it's because you can get into the code and manipulate what these these things can do in lots of different places in this code um we're going to do the same thing we did with naming this tile set i'm going to go to project project labels and i just happen to remember the the order of those tile zero was null and if you want to do this that you might want to it'll make it easier later oops sorry project labels tile zero is null uh that's good for walkable i'll even put that walkable tile one was solid tile two was death Tile three was win, and tile four was warp to screen. Um, and they're already set up, so we could define a lot more. In fact, you can, there's more than 15. You can define up to 32 tiles, uh, tile types, I believe. And we're going to stick to 16 for now in case I'm wrong about that. But um, now I have collision data. I'm going to have to navigate away and come back. Now I have collision data that I can add to these tiles. And I had it anyway, I, did, that's, I didn't have to name them. Naming them just makes it easier when I'm starting to snap together these, these screens. So um, this is a grass tile. I'm going to make it a null walkable tile and I'm gonna tell it to use this sub palette, which it already is using this sub palette. Um, and I'm gonna call this just ground and I'm gonna save new. And if I look in my assets now, and I have a little plus sign, there's my ground. Cool. I'm going to have a mushroom, which is going to be a solid tile. So I'm going to, this is already saved. I'm going to click on mushroom. And I don't want it to use sub palette one. I want it to use sub palette two. So I'm going to click on sub palette two. Now, when I put this in, this, in, in the game, it'll, it'll use sub palette two. And I'm going to call this one. And I don't want this to be walkable. I want this to be solid. And I'm going to call this mushroom and I'm going to save it. And then lastly, I'm going to make this tree and I'm going to, now the tree is not just a one by one tile. It's two by two. So I'm going to change the, the width and the height 
And I'm just going to click on what I want to change and then click what I want to change it to. And I have a tree. Now, I need all of these tiles to be set to solid. I could make an asset that had a spiky point on just on this one tile and that was a death tile but all the rest were solid that kind of thing so you need to make sure that you set every tile similarly you could have a pink tree where the top of it is using sub palette zero and the bottom of it is using sub palette one um you know or i could have i don't really see any difference yeah i could have like a snowy tree you know, something like that, um, where I just reverse that. This uses sub palette zero and this uses sub palette one. And all that data is being saved with the with the tree. So, but these are all going to use that. And I'm just making sure solid, 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 solid. On this interface, please disregard the following things. This bit and this bit. These won't do anything in this engine right now. Um, and also night palette. If you click on this, it'll go to night palette. Disregard night palette. Just keep it on day palette for now. All right. And I'm going to call this asset tree. Save new. So now I've got three different assets over here. And just to, to demonstrate the concept, I'm going to make a uh, light colored tree. And I'll call this tree two and save that. And these should still all be solid. Yep. I'm going to save that. So now I've got two different types of trees. Um, and I can, yeah. So I get two different types of trees. One is lighter on the top and one looks almost snowy and one is normal. Now that I've got a few assets, I can go to my overworld. So let's take a look at the map interface. Um, this is the map interface. I can select a screen anywhere as a starting position. Um, but what's important is that I choose the graphics bank that I want. If I remember, I was using graphics bank one. Graphics bank zero is reserved for uh, special screens and things like that. So we're not worried about that. But these three uh, are for uh, making your maps. I want to use graphics bank one because that's where my graphics are. So I'm going to make sure that I'm on graphics bank one and double click on a screen. It auto fills with the first tile. So it auto fills with, with the, the grass tile. And you know, that looks a little bit dark to me. I can actually start changing things like I can, oops, I can change the ground color if I wanted, but now it's going to blend in with the tree. Um, but just to let you know, when I'm making this, this is now changing the actual palette that's loaded. If I wanted to load a different palette, like if I wanted to load the dummy palette for some reason, I could load the dummy palette. I don't want that. I want the overworld palette group and I want to get the grassy palette. So uh, uh, we're going to look at more details about this. But right now, I just want to show you how to bring assets into this tool. And then we're going to uh, uh, just see how that works. And then we're going to talk about building uh, start screens and things like that. So uh, to, in order to bring one of these graphics into here with its collision detection, I just click on it. Now it's selected. I can see that it's selected. And when I move my mouse over here, I can see a ghosted image of it appear. If I click, it appears in the screen. So I could start making a row of trees. Now, one thing that happens is, what if I'm on the edge of the screen and I want to shoot, like I, I do this and I have like, you know, it alternating. What if I want to get over here? I can't get over here. However, if I press the shift key, you can see what happens. My position of origin changes. So I can place just those two tiles on the edge. Similarly, if I'm at the top and I want to put it up here, I just want to see the bottom of it, but I can't. If I hold the control key, it changes so I can just put the bottoms. So, okay, that's good. I want to put like one white tree in the middle here. Um, and then I'm going to dot some mushrooms around. This is a horrible looking screen. We're not actually going to use this. I just wanted to demonstrate how you can make assets. They'll show up here uh, when and they're showing up because I've cho cho I've chosen the grassland tile set. Um, and if I chose choose dungeon tile set, I'm not going to see them. In fact, it's giving me the same values. So uh, whatever was was tile zero in in which was ground is showing up as tile zero whatever was tile one is showing up as tile one that's why i'm getting these this weird graphic change um 
grass, but I, I chose grassland. I actually chose by default because it's tile set zero. Um, and that's how I was able to easily start constructing a screen. If I hit, if I ever need to get rid of, and there's a couple of reasons why you would that ghosted image, if I hit escape, now I no longer have anything from over here selected. Um, also to notice up here is all the data about that screen. So first of all, if I need to know the position of a screen X and Y, it shows me right up here. If I need to know the sub palette that a tile uses, like this one uses sub palette two, whereas this uses sub palette one. Uh, it also shows me the, the uh, collision data. So this is solid, that's walkable, that's solid. Okay, so that's a quick look at how we can add graphics really easily. We're going to make a couple different types of graphics and show how we can construct screens out of them next.